7, in terms of section 96, subsection 1 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, hereby formally tender my resignation as the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe with immediate effect. Seven years with one president, it doesn't make any sense. So this time it begins, it, it's eroding a new era for us as a nation. We were tired of this man. We are so glad he's gone. We don't want him anymore. And yes, today it's victory. It's victory in our hearts. It, it's victory for our children. And it's totally new. A dramatic turn of events that some call divine intervention. Against all odds, a new president is inaugurated in Zimbabwe. I, Emerson Dambuzom Nangagwa, swear that as president of the Republic of Zimbabwe, I will be faithful. to Zimbabwe and obey, uphold and defend the Constitution and all other laws of Zimbabwe. And that I will promote whatever will advance and oppose whatever may harm Zimbabwe. That I will discharge my duties with all my strength to the best of my knowledge and ability and the true to the dictates of my conscience and that I will devote myself to the well-being of Zimbabwe and its people. So help me God. His predecessor, Robert Mugabe, had clung to power for 37 years. I, Robert Gabriel Mugabe, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Zimbabwe and observe the laws of Zimbabwe. But, in the end, the pressure to quit proves overwhelming. Tuesday, 21st November 2017, 
and the 93-year-old Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe has suddenly resigned. This is shortly after the army had taken over the capital of Harare. Mugabe's own party, ZANU-PF, had turned on him and an impeachment motion was looming. I'm very happy today. It's our independence today. <laughs> we are now a free Zimbabwe. Nobody can stop us. Nobody can hinder us. Zimbabwe as a nation is celebrating what today we have achieved. So the type of democracy that is working for us is this one. There's no blood. There's nobody arrested. The soldiers are here with us and we are so happy. And this is what we wanted. We are here to celebrate the new independence of Zimbabwe. 18th of November 2017. Today there is change in our country and we are excited and we will make the change. We are walking for change today. I'm very happy. I, 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 don't, I don't have anything to say, but I'm happy with this. What Mugabe has, I'm, I, I can't, I, I don't have any words to say now. 37 years with one president, it doesn't make any sense. So this time it begins, it, it's eroding a new era for us as a nation. Jubilation erupts on the streets of Harare. Celebrations strangely at odds with Robert Mugabe and ZANU-PF's claimed majority support. Our country is going to be different and our relations all over the world are going to be normalized. We are a peace-loving country. Let him go by now, okay? okay? Let me leave, okay? I'm finally happy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm happy, happy. I'm totally happy. This is a change, a great change. 37 years of the same, same operation. We didn't fight the 1980 war, but we fought the 2017 war. And we are happy that Mugabe is gone and is gone for good. Happy New Zimbabwe! Mugabe had led Zimbabwe since independence in 1980. It's very unfortunate that, uh, you know, in the, in the process of wanting to create a dynasty, the Mugabe's have taken Zimbabwe as their private company. And uh, the boys show opulence in a sea, sea of poverty. Grace has shown no respect at all to Zimbabweans. But not only cruel, she has a uh, penchant for uh, spending taxpayers' money in, uh, in absolutely outrageous ways when everybody else is uh, wallowing in poverty, when people are dying uh, because of lack of access to basic health care. In fact, the Zimbabweans are more tolerant to Mr. Mugabe than they are to his family because the, his family has shown total disregard for the people of Zimbabwe. Friday, 24th November 2017, only three days since Mugabe's resignation, Emerson Munangangwa is sworn in as president of Zimbabwe. This is remarkable, considering Mugabe had fired Munangangwa as vice president less than three weeks earlier. For the time that I shall be president of Zimbabwe, I solemnly promise that I shall to the best of my ability, serve everyone, everyone who calls and considers Zimbabwe their home. I encourage all of us to remain peaceful, even as preparations for political contestations for next year's harmonized free and fair elections gather momentum. The voice of the people is the voice of God. To the Western world, Robert Mugabe was an evil despot. There will never be a regime change here. Yeah. There will always be the people of Zimbabwe in control.
the European Union and United States had imposed heavy sanctions on the former British colony. But Munangangwa's rise could signal a new era of cooperation. I have to say that the resignation of Robert Mugabe, I think, provides Zimbabwe with an opportunity to forge a new path free from the oppression that has characterised the past. We want to see a democratic, free, secure Zimbabwe where people across communities, from communities across Zimbabwe, are able to carry out their lives without fear, without oppression. Uh, and we want to see that country rejoining the international community. Uh, we uh, have obviously uh, provided some support uh, to uh, Zimbabwe in terms of UK aid. And as their oldest friend, we will do everything we can to support their change into a country that is free, that is democratic, that is free of all uh, oppression for all communities. Certainly what we saw today, the resignation of Robert Mugabe, is a historic opportunity and historic moment for the people of Zimbabwe. Uh, the people of Zimbabwe have firmly voiced their desire for a new era to bring an end to Zimbabwe's isolation and allow the country to rejoin the international community. The future of Zimbabwe, though, has to be determined by the people of that country. Uh, we look forward to and hope for free and fair elections. Uh, what they will do in the meantime is uh, what we hope we continue to urge unwavering respect for the rule of law and for established democratic practices. Mugabe先生为津巴布为民族独立和解放事业做出过历史性的贡献。他长期以来致力于中金友好和中非友好,为中金关系和中非关系发展都做出过重要贡献。Munangangwa returns to a hero's welcome two days before he officially takes power. On behalf of the Zimbabwean youth who reside in South Africa, we want to say thank you to the military people. Without you, we were not going to succeed in taking Mr. Mugabe out. We want to go back home. Even tomorrow, even now at night, we are very happy. I've got nothing to say. I'm very, very happy. I'm happy because Mugabe has resigned. We have been suffering for so many years. I came here in South Africa in 2002. Since 2002, I went to Zimbabwe and come back, but still the situation was not fine. We've been waiting for this day, I don't know how many years now. With freedom at last. Yeah, it's a good feeling we're seeing at the newspaper, the headline, to see that the heroes will come for it is. So we are happy. <laughs> Much as we are going towards an election, people will be free to make a selection, a choice of their own, without being intimidated. And the environment should be actually uh, giving people that uh, the freedom that they want to choose the leader that they feel is their leader. But the 75-year-old Munangangwa's recent road to rulership has not been an easy one. In August 2017, he had fled to South Africa, allegedly after being poisoned. Munangangwa directs suspicions at his former biggest rival, Mugabe's ambitious wife, Grace. that captured the executive in the person of our president. Orders were now coming not from the executive, from people outside the executive to implement in government and to run government. But the people of Zimbabwe yourselves have refused. In 2013, Mugabe's ZANU-PF party had claimed unemployment levels stood at 60%. Now, some 16 million citizens demand reforms. The new president is making all the right noises.
The task at hand is that of rebuilding our great country. It principally lies with none but ourselves to do so. I implore you all to declare that never again, never again, should the circumstances that have put Zimbabwe in an unfavorable position be allowed to recur or overshadow this prospect. But can Mnangangwa give the country's failing economy the kickstart it so desperately needs? Our expectations to the new president, incoming president, is to open up, open up to the, you know, to the markets, outside markets, to bring in more investors. He is a perfectionist, humble, and very energetic man. So and we hope, and I, I know so, that for the time he's going to be running, there are going to be a lot of changes. For we are well aware that he's got links internationally. So in a way, both business-wise and socially, I'm sure we're going to have a brighter future. I, I think he is going to do things which were not been done by the past president. You know, we, we want that president to be unite with other, with other people, with other continents, so that we can build our country. The party, the ruling party, and the state have conflated. So decisions that are made in ZANU-PF, in the, in, the, in the party, affect the state. Decisions that are made in the state are synonymous and congruent with the vital interests of the party. And precisely because it has been a securocratic state, whoever was the head of state was the mere normative representative of this military uh, order. And he or she would remain so as long as he or she continued to serve the interests of the military. And once that person served to sto to stopped serving the interests of the military, they would recall him. And so in a way what happened last week was a recall of someone who was no longer acting in the best interests of the securocratic state. But that doesn't tell the complete story. The true story is that as of now Zimbabwe and before the removal of President Mugabe, Zimbabwe was caught up in a series of multiple crises that all converged at one particular historic juncture, which has never happened in our, in our, in our history. Others, however, are still disillusioned about the country's political system. Many accuse the former president of ruling by fear and intimidation. Uh, I am afraid to answer your questions. I uh, don't... Uh, politics uh, is a dead game. I think there's one thing that we need to straighten up here. Uh, we are viewing this as, uh, as if it's all about Robert Mugabe. But our view as the People's Democratic Party is that this is about the people of Zimbabwe. This time we must be dealing with issues of the people of Zimbabwe that are scattered all over the world, that are, are refugees, the people of Zimbabwe uh, that are suffering in Zimbabwe because of Robert Mugabe. The clear issue here is that Robert Mugabe is a symbol of poverty. Robert Mugabe is a symbol of thuggery. Robert Mugabe is a symbol of murder, symbol of, uh, of, of mrambatsuina, political violence. All those things are associated with Robert Mugabe. If we are to talk of, about real liberation, we have liberation heroes such as General Lookout Masugu, Joshua Nkomo, Tongo Kara, Mchuru. Those are the people that we can talk about, not Robert Mugabe, a man who can't even fire a pistol. He is not a liberation symbol. So exactly who is Emerson Munangangwa? Is he what Zimbabwe really wants? Munangangwa is inaugurated as president of Zimbabwe on the 24th of November 2017. 
he is vice president of Zimbabwe from December 2014 until Robert Mugabe fires him in November 2017. Mnangagwa helped direct the War of Independence in the 60s and 70s. He was jailed for 10 years but gained a University of Zambia LLB degree and admitted to the High Court of Zambia Bar in 1976. Emerson Tambuzo Mnangagwa was born on the 15th of September 1942 in Shabani, southern Rhodesia. The incoming president, Emerson Mnangagwa, has a dark side. Um, we, will not, we will judge him in terms of uh, the work that he does. But uh, look, he was minister of, uh, in, <coughs> of intelligence in 1980. Uh, he was involved uh, in the atrocities in a genocide in Matebele and Midlands in 1983 to 1987. He was involved uh, in the reversing the people's will uh, in 2008 with the military. We are asking ourselves whether is Mnangagwa, as you read the Bible, the poor, the soul in the Bible, traveled on Damascus Road, the soul was persecuting Christians, will he be the man that the people of Zimbabwe uh, have been waiting for? Emerson Mnangagwa is the right person to take over Zimbabwe and develop the country economically. What Zimbabweans are worried about at this point in time are bread and butter issues. Zimbabweans want to work for Zimbabwe. And they have come out very clearly in solidarity to say that we are willing, we are coming up and we're saying this is who we want to lead our country. Emerson, he's a lover of power and he's then sided with those very imperialists who we threw out so that he can maintain power. What we will see now is a, is a, is a reversal of the gains that we've got under Robert Mugabe. What we should have done is seen and, and, and pushing, a deeper pushing through the socialization. So we must understand what is happening now. If we care about the Zimbabwean people authentically and truly, we won't put someone in power who is there for his own power gains so that he can maintain Zimbabwean people. Yeah. South Africa has maintained a respectful distance during the Zimbabwe crisis. But can it still afford to sit on the economic sidelines? The issue is, a chief of the army in Zimbabwe made a certain statement, the government in Zimbabwe must deal with that matter. Not the ANC in South Africa. ZANU-PF must deal with that issue because Zimbabwe is not our colony. It is not our province. It is our neighbor. If things go wrong there, of course, we'll be concerned because it will impact on us. But we have no authority over them. That's the point we're making. So we have the economic crisis. 95% of our people are unemployed. It's hard to imagine when you, when you, when you, when you put it in figures, but it's the truth. 82% of our people are living in extreme poverty, surviving on less than US 35 cents a day, which is something like five rand. We have got the challenge of a huge fiscal crisis arising out of the failure by the authorities to implement a strong anti-cyclical fiscal regime and if you look at the, at the, at the economy of Zimbabwe it, it loves these cycles these elongated cycles of slums and booms like slums and booms slums and booms the last time around was between 1997 and 2008 a period an 11 year period in respect of which the economy lost 60 percent of its value it's a bit tricky because uh, there's uh, uncertainty in the country and no one knows what will happen tomorrow. So currently there's no one uh, uh, crossing the border, especially coming to South Africa uh, to buy or do any trade. Meanwhile, what's next for the Mugabe's? Zimbabwe has granted the Mugabe's immunity from prosecution and assured their safety at home. The Mugabe's own properties in Zimbabwe South Africa, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Dubai. South Africa's Department of International Relations has not received any request from the Mugabe's for asylum. Robert Mugabe frequently visits Singapore for medical treatment. Presidential Retirement Benefits Robert Mugabe will continue to earn his presidential salary 
as per a constitution drafted in 2013. A former president or vice president is entitled to receive a pension equivalent to the salary of a sitting president or vice president. Reports say Grace Mugabe will get state-sponsored domestic help, air travel, an office and entertainment allowance. A turn of events that has sparked heated debate as the sun sets on Robert Mugabe's controversial reign. This is a monumental event that occurred within ZANU-PF. Okay. Without the opposition. Okay, Mr. opposition. There is the no opposition. regime change agency yeah. agent, agent according to... They didn't have an electoral process. How can you say this is democratic what happened in ZANU-PF? It's a lie. Yeah. Can we just get a different we need perspective? To, to assist here. You see, one very important thing that is uh, essential for us to be able to move forward as Africa is that we must sober up and look at our issues. And one of the most important things uh, uh, that I want to raise is that Africa has no economic challenges, but leadership challenges. Mm. And that is where our problem mm. emanated mm. from, mm. as Zimbabwe. Mm. 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 The, yes. the, the thing that we are calling for as Zimbabweans is that uh, 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 there is this culture of audit, actions audit. We must be able and we must be allowed as Zimbabweans to audit whoever played a role in any wrongdoing or right doing. The winds of change are blowing strong in Zimbabwe. A nod to the late British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan's famous speech delivered in Cape Town in 1960. The wind of change is blowing through this continent. Whether we like it or not, this growth of national consciousness is a political fact. But as Zimbabwe now sets a bold new course, is it the right one? <laughs>